Whoa! She was cool for a while, but I'm glad she died. Yeah, it hurts me to hear that from somebody. You guys were haters. He's eating his foot and everything. But yeah, it could have been written on a postcard. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera, and I like to do weekly thoughtful videos or funny videos and unhinged videos, which is the case of this one. Today, I have a very exciting guest on this channel. It's Jaden and Marty from Next Chapter, the everyday Cosmere fans. Welcome to the channel, guys. Thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Let's jump into the first one then. The books aren't that good. Well, not bad either. The narrative structure is predictable. Characters take pages to express something a skilled writer could do with a phrase. The books are well read because they are page turners, but ultimately lack substance. The twists can be neat, but they lack the punch as I don't care if the characters live or die. Okay, first of all, uh, you cannot say the book is very predictable and you are okay with the page turners and the twists. Yeah, how is it a those page contradict turner? each other. Yeah. And the fact that I always hear this and people are like, oh, you could have said those multiple pages in like a sentence. Like, I don't necessarily think that just because you could have written it in a sentence means that it should have been written in a sentence. The fact that it's like, oh yeah, it could have been written short. Yeah, it could have been written on a postcard, yeah. but that doesn't mean it would have been better. So for the, the lack substance piece of it, like we have gone through, what is it, probably 50 videos now and analyzing the plots and characters and things of Brandon Sanderson's books. So I would hard disagree that there's no substance in these books. The character depth alone is one that I don't see in very many comparative books. So well, I mean, we talk about it all the time. You're almost getting your own self-help books out of these things. Yeah. You are learning from this guy, all of the leadership and everything. So if you want to call it substance and that, like there's regard, a huge amount of deep. substance. In it's these super books. deep, especially when he goes into religion and cultures and relationships. Yeah. Some of the yeah. best character development I've seen. So hard refute on that one. <laughs> I heard someone say that there is no character development in the way of Kings. Oh, I was hoping for an explanation because that is just incorrect. I mean, maybe you didn't finish the book, but um, Kaladin, heard of him? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think that's a crazy take. And since the person didn't give any explanation, neither am I. I know. The person obviously <laughs> disagrees with themselves because they said, I heard someone said it. They're like, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> that, that's got to be what it is. It's got to be. They're too that scared way. to finish that sentence. I like Sanderson, but when he's trying to be funny, it's pretty cringy. Characters like Wayne and Mistborn Era 2 are a prime example of this. Wow, hot take. Okay, I can see it sometimes. I actually can see I, why the, where they're coming from, because there are a lot of the Wayne things. I remember when we read the Wax and Wayne series, you specifically said, oh, write down all your favorite things that Wayne says because he's so funny. <laughs> this is true. And but, I did, but the first two books, they're not that funny. Okay, the first two books are fine, but <laughs> it's. I think it was, I was having recency bias because I just finished reading Lost Metal, and I think Wayne gets way better by the time you get to Lost Metal. I think Sanderson's evolved as a writer as by then, too. I, yeah. I see it, but I do see where the, the hot take is coming from, though. Okay, unpopular it is then. Steris is the best female character in the Cosmere so far. I'll let you start. Or I guess I could start. So I, I just can't. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, um. <laughs> I think Steris grows. Honestly, I do not like her character at all for the first few books. By the time you get to Lost Metal, she... I know! But by the time you get to Lost Metal, she's great. And I really like it. She We learn more about her and why she is the way she is. And she just becomes more real of a character, which I really like. We like... Um, oh, now I'm forgetting her sister's name. Yeah, so maybe you didn't like Morassi as much, huh? <laughs> That's right. Marisy. I, I loved Marisy. I just wanted that relationship so bad between Marisy and uh, Wayne. Or it evolves, it evolves so well over the course of those stories. It's like she finds her place. Steris finds her place and she really amplifies that. But yeah. she does not have a solid place in the first couple of books. Okay, I do want to jump in here because I can't let this go. Um, I am going to always defend Steris because she is the best Era 2 character. I wouldn't say that she is the best Cosmere female character overall, but definitely Era 2. I'll even go further. I'll say that the romance between Wax and Steris is the best romance Sanderson has ever written. Yes, even more than Ooh. Yumi. I, I have to defend her. Shallan is one of the best written characters in Stormlight. I really don't understand the hate. She's got growth, turmoil, multiple personalities. Her worst scene was pretending to be a horn eater and stealing Kaladin's boots, but that turned out to be a fun joke between the two of them. 
Okay, so for this one, I know this will be a hot take of, amongst my audience because you guys were haters when talking about Chillon. I honestly think that the most comments, especially on Instagram, oh my gosh, you guys need to uh, stop with the hateration. There's a reason Words of Radiance is the most popular, most highly rated Stormlight book, and it is the Chillon book. And especially counting in her flashback sequence, I do think she is one of the best written Stormlight characters. Not the most funny. I think she's quite annoying for the first two books, but that doesn't make her not a well-written character. I do want to jump in for a second. Do you think that Words of Radiance is good in spite of Sir Shallan's part? That's kind of like how it is for me. <laughs> My take on Words of Radiance is that it is more clunkily plotted, but it elicited a bigger emotional reaction out of me than The Way of Kings. So I wouldn't say that anything is in spite of Shallan. I think she fits into the tapestry of Words of Radiance quite well. Yumi and the Nightmare Painter was the best secret project. I have a couple of secret projects on the shelf right behind me that I could say are better than that. There are only four secret projects overall. Yumi is a great one, but let me just enter Sunlit Man because it's so good. It's my favorite secret project, and I think tons of people's favorite secret project because it's just that good. He did a great job of his secret projects, but catapulting Yumi to the top, I think, is premature. Uh, I think Tress Sunlit Man's my favorite. Tress of the Emerald Sea is clearly the best, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Yumi and the Nightmare Painter is good. It's a great story. I think it's really creative and everything. But Tress of the Emerald Sea is your classic storybook like, fairy tale, almost. And that is the book that I look to mo most about reading to my children someday. And like, that will be probably the first Cosmere book that they get. Jaden, could you rank the secret projects? If I was to rank the secret projects, I would say Sunlit Man, Tress of the Emerald Sea, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and then honorary mention, the book I have not read, <laughs> Frugal Wizard's Guide. <laughs> well, spoiler alert, it's going to be your least favorite of the four. Like, that's what I've heard. That that's guy. why I haven't read it yet. But yeah, those are that's my ranking. What about you, Marty? My rankings for the secret projects would be number one, Tress, number two, Sunlit Man, number three, Yumi, and number four, uh, Frugal Wizard. Warbreaker is better than any Mistborn book. Ooh. No. Ooh. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I know Marty's going to say no. I, I liked Warbreaker more than Marty did, and I would still say no. Not even The Final Empire? Yeah, I I, I think it was better. Than, I think The Final Empire is better than, like, Warbreaker. For me, like Jaden said, I was a, not a fan of Warbreaker yeah. that much. I love Final Empire, Well of Ascension. That series together was the best series I'd ever read in my life combined until I got to the Stormlight Archive. I think I'll, I'll augment it by the fact that Many people who watch our channel know that I love The Sunlit Man, one of my favorites. I still would not put The Sunlit Man up against the trilogy of Mistborn. I hate Hoyd. In the beginning, he was very intriguing, but I grew tired of him and actually started hating him. Whoa! That is a terrible, terrible take. Wow. Hoyd is the fabric that laces the Cosmere together. <laughs> he really is, though. He's, he's hilarious. He's, he's funny. Witty. He tells amazing stories. He's smart. Yeah, moves the story along. Well traveled. That's that's oh, it's a painful take. Yeah. It hurts me to hear that from I, somebody. Let's see if I had to guess which of the Cosmere books this person has read, and they probably have only read one to get that sense from Hoyd. I can't even. It don't have to be Stormlight Archive number one. And they just didn't see Hoyd at all, and then they're like, Well, no, Hoyd is in that book. He's the he's the uh, the king's wit. Oh yes, maybe that. Rub someone the wrong way. Maybe he just, they just don't like how insulting he is. This he, person, whoever they are, just keep keep reading, keep enjoying. You, you probably haven't read The Secret Projects yet. Read Tress of the Emerald Sea. Tress and Sunlit Man would be good for you. He could come off as annoying in Tress, though, because uh, he's uh, got his no, He's awesome. He's got his curse and everything in there. He, he's yeah. eating his foot. Honestly, though, that I hope we hear, see a heck of a lot more of Hoyt in the future, so I'm sorry this person's going to have to deal with it, but I'm pushing hard. Oathbringer is the weakest of the series. A lot of it is the Roshar version of a Zoom call, and it's way too long. Uh, well, uh, oh, no, I was going to say that I'm glad it's your subscriber that said this, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Oh, I think you could say I it. I think it's hilarious. I, <laughs> something we would say. <laughs> <laughs> we did rank it last and out of our uh, top four. For me, Oathbringer is one of the best books that I have ever read in my life. There are only 11 books that I have rated five stars ever, and Oathbringer is one of them. If you want to hear a more impassioned speech that I give about Oathbringer and how much emotion it rises out of me, then go watch our video on Jaden and Marty's channel. 
The following segment contains major spoilers for the full Cosmere. If you are not caught up, please skip ahead to where Jaden, Marty, and I share our unpopular opinions. I have read a lot of books, and no villain has terrified me more than Teravangian. Does that count as a hot take? Uh, I think I have a more hot take than that one, actually, about Teravangian, and it's that I'm really not excited for Todium. I'm really not excited for Todium. I like Teravangian. I thought he was very interesting with the duality of he's so smart that he creates the diagram, but then he's too dumb to understand it on some days. And then, ah, oh man, I don't know. I kind of got bored of him. I do think Sanderson put himself in a tough corner of we defeated Odium once at the end of Oathbringer, so how are how is he going to come back and be interesting again? When we found out that Teravangian was basically taking over, I was kind of like, Ugh, here we go. But I do have to say the epilogue of Rhythm of War where he goes against my boy Hoid. I do have some intrigue left because of that. My favorite female character is Eshenai. Eshenai is so overrated. Oh my gosh. Uh, Venli is the better sister. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. She was cool for a while, but I'm glad she died. My bad take is I was hardcore shipping Shaladin, Shalon, and Kaladin in the first two books, and I'm still a little bit. But I guess Shalon and Adolin are kind of cute too. Really dumb, I know. A legit take is that's pretty popular from what I've seen that Adolin is going to die in Stormlight 5 so that Shalon will be set up to be a world hopper. Well, first of all, uh, shipping Shalon and Kaladin is something that I'm very much against. I did not see their chemistry. I Well, okay, I did see a bit of their chemistry, but for the purposes of this video, I didn't see their chemistry because I loved Adolin and Shalon. For me, the scene where Pattern does the no mating is one of the best things <laughs> Sanderson has ever written. It was so funny. And so uh, from the start, whenever I saw the sparks between Kaladin and Shalon, I was like, absolutely not, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, as for whether he'll die, now I think that he will die, and it's all thanks to Tutu Ramble and their predictions video. So um, thanks, Austin and Richard. You ruined my day. <laughs> I know, those I, guys. I saw that video the other day, too. <laughs> I was a little bit bummed by it. I think Kelsier not actually dying in book one was in poor taste. His sacrifice was a really powerful moment in the story, and I feel like the impact of what he did for the entire empire by becoming a martyr is largely negated by the revealing that he didn't actually die. I love his character as much as anyone, but I still felt like Sanderson should have left Kelsier alone. Hard disagree with this one. I understand where they're coming from, though. It does make sense. You do want some characters to stay dead. Kelsier, though, is just different. It, his character makes sense for this to start causing the conflict that it's going to start happening between worlds. And it wasn't a part of the original main series anyways. And so a lot of people will never know that Kelsier didn't die unless they read on past that original trilogy. Yeah, I think at first my take was to agree with this and just say like, oh, it's kind of weird when you start bringing people back from the, back from the dead. It's just kind of hard to keep reading and be like, well, what about this other person? Shouldn't they have been brought back from the dead? But uh, now that I've read more in the Cosmere in general, I would say it's a, there's a very good reason for it. And I think it will lead to a more significant impact in the Cosmere. I kind of had the same reaction as Jaden until Marty started explaining that since it's not in the trilogy itself, it doesn't undermine anything in that trilogy for readers who just read that. For me, I don't see the justification for it yet. I, I don't know what the Ghost Bloods are about. Mistborn Era 3 is going to be titled Ghost Bloods, at least that's the plan right now, so hopefully we get some sort of justification there. So I'm fine with it for now, but what it does make me worry about is will Sanderson do more fake out deaths? Uh, he does like them. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, that was the last hot take from you guys. However, before we get going, I do have a question for Jaden and Marty. Guys, what is your hottest take about the Cosmere? My hottest take about the Cosmere, controversial take, is that the interludes could for the most part be skipped and read at the end of the book and you would not lose anything. Skipped, maybe. Cut out, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, Skip. They could be skipped and read at the end. Like, don't distract yeah. you from the plot. Keep reading the plot and come back to him. <laughs> My hot take is more from Sanderson himself and less from the books. Sanderson recently said that Dave Bautista, or Drax, from Guardians of the Galaxy would be the perfect person to play Dalinar from the Stormlight Archive. And I think that is the worst casting decision that you could possibly make. I'm with you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vera, what's your hot take? 
My hot take is that Rhythm of War is brought down by Navani and increased in quality by Venli. Wow, that wow. is a quite the hot take. Bombshell. I hate Navani. Really? I love Navani. I, I, she's such a bitch. I hate her. <laughs> I think she's that. great. Well, thank you so much, guys, for coming on to the channel today. Oh, it's been awesome. It's been a blast to be here. Thanks for having us. And I will link the Next Chapter YouTube channel in the description. So be sure to check them out and to check out our video that we did together, which will show up right after the outro. Anyways, that's all for me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.